Good morning, Spirit is Christy. Our first reading is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now they were devout Jews from every nation under heaven, staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused, because each one heard them speaking in their own language. They were astounded, and in amazement they asked, Are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of and Alamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pam Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God, the word of God. Good morning. Today's response, palm response is, Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless, O Lord, O my soul. How manifold are your works, O Lord. The earth is full of your creatures. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord be glad in all works. Pleasing to God be my theme. I will be glad in the Lord. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. If you take away their breath, they perish and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created and you renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God, who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one through, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For, for in one Spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. The word of God. Thanks be with you, friends. Thank you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the authorities, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As God has sent me, 
so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them, and he said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord In 2017, Dr. Lorinda Parks came to me after the shooting deaths of many unarmed black men, and she said, Reverend Myra, we have to do something. I know you've been preaching about racism in the church, but what are we going to do? We white people need to do something. What are we going to do, she said. We have to get the white people to start feeling it and doing something to become better ambassadors, Reverend Myra, like the people of color in our church. And so I asked her, I said, well, what would you like us to do? And I believe being led by the Spirit, she said, we should go south to the hub of racial history and tension so that black people and white people could feel the impact of racism together. We could spend a week together, go to historic sites, and unpack it together. We could go to listen, learn, and act. And so we created a race convoy south where we took black and white parishioners south to do just that, to experience racism together and to unpack it. Little did we know that in the video killing of George Floyd in Minneapolis, we would all be taken as a nation on a race convoy together. We felt the injustices together. Our hearts were stirred to ask deeper questions of ourselves and the world around us about equity and race and injustice and systemic power and our role in transformation. And so here we are again. That race convoy that we took, we knew that we were being led by the Spirit as we listened, as we learned and prepared ourselves to act. And now we find ourselves as a nation, as a church, and as a people in this moment, mourning the loss of George Floyd, Ahmed Arbery, Breonna Taylor, and so many others, and being led by the same spirit to transform our world. Today, we celebrate the Feast of Pentecost, which in the Greek means the spring harvest, a time when something is ripe and ready, if ever there was a moment in time where our world is ripe and ready for justice, it's this one, isn't it? Amen. And so we're being led, I believe, by the Spirit to do the work in these moments of justice and equity and compassion. All we have to do is look at all the people that are taking to the streets together. People from all walks of life, people from all countries, People in Minneapolis and Hong Kong and Chicago and Rochester and Buffalo from all over the world. And so as we celebrate Pentecost Sunday, we really celebrate our own feast day, the Feast of Spiritus Christi, this giving and working of the Spirit of Christ. So Jesus gives the Spirit to his disciples in this gospel today to assist them in their work just as he has given it to us to address the work of healing in our own world, which includes ending racism and inequities and oppression in order that we might create a place for everybody. So Jesus gives the disciples this spirit because it has creation power. That's why we need the spirit. It has sustaining power. It has the power to help overcome our fears, to allow God to guide us, to lead us, into the transform transformational work in the world. We need this Pentecost. Jesus encounters the disciples behind locked doors and they're fearful of what their future holds because of the power of the authorities and a system that so easily took Jesus' life and left them without protection, knowing that the same could possibly happen to them. 
And so Jesus comes to them that they might experience the power of the Spirit. So we too have spent the last few months, we're not much different from these disciples in the gospel today. We've spent the last few months behind locked doors due to the coronavirus as we've settled in to stay at home orders and New York on pause to curtail the virus. We too have feared and some of us continue to be fearful every day of what could happen to us, to our friends, to our families and neighbors who succumb to the virus. And we know many people who have already died from it. And so we, we, know, we understand that kind of fear behind a locked door, especially if we don't continue to practice safe guidelines. And yet the disciples, like them, we too have also experienced the power of the Spirit, despite our fears and despite our challenges. So Jesus calls the disciples to peace, and he shows them his wounds in his hands and in his side. Dr. King once said that peace isn't the absence of conflict, but the presence of justice. And so Jesus comes to call them from behind their walls of fear, not to avoid conflict, but to do the work of justice and compassion in the world that will bring about true peace. And I thought it was quite interesting that he starts by saying, look at my wounds. Because sometimes we have to look at the wounds like Jesus did, like he called them to look on before we are compelled to do the work. George Floyd's death has allowed us to look at the wounds of racism in our nation, and it's inspiring us to act together. In the gospel today, Jesus' mission is to send them out to do that transformative work in the world in which they live just as he is calling us to do the same. He tells the disciples in this gospel, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. He knows that the world needs him, and just as the world needs us right now. And that God is leading them by the spirit that Jesus comes to give them. Friends, I am so proud of how the spirit has been unleashed fire in our hearts in the world to join Jesus and these disciples in that work, the work of transformation. For 22 years, you have carried the fire of the Spirit in the work here at Spiritus in the parish, and I've watched the power of that Spirit work. And so as we celebrate our feast day today, I began to reflect on where and how I've seen that spirit at work. Last January, the spirit was at work when it led Reverend Mary and Marcy de Jesus and I to Toronto, where we presented at the Parliament of World Religions on the work of a parish on climate change, on buddy readers and working with children and addressing educational issues racism. Here it was at work with our young adults this year. There were dinners and gatherings and retreats and Bible studies and monthly mass for young adults in our parish to be more connected and to be more part of the parish. And they have really been amazing uh, in now lectors and greeters, they're on our stewardship committee, they're on our live stream team, team, our outreaches, our staff, and we are the better for it. The spirit was at work. The spirit has been at work in our visioning board. We elected a wonderful group of people with Kevin Bishop and Lisa Moretto leading us, who have not only just helped us keep focus on the vision of our parish, but they've provided pastoral support and oversight. And during this pandemic, they reached out to vulnerable members of our community with weekly calls and check-ins, those who were experiencing isolation during this time. 
the Spirit was at work. The Spirit was at work through Davis Craig and the work that he has been leading for us in live streaming and technology training efforts and web website optimization and systems operation management. The Spirit has been at work in our live stream team who comes every week. Aaron Lynch, Sarah, David, John, and Tom. And our live stream team, they come and they make this amazing experience happen every week to keep us and keep our hearts connected. The Spirit has been at work in creating a virtual community. This past week, we realized that we picked up about 30 parishioners from around the country who don't live in Rochester, who felt compelled by the Spirit to be part of this community via live stream. The Spirit has been at work in our health ministry team that has been leading the effort to put together guidelines and training videos and best practices for how to reopen our doors in person when we gather again. The Spirit has been at work in our outreach ministries and Grace of God who serves men in recovery as we raised $60,000 this past year for that amazing work. It's been at work in our prison outreach ministry as we raised over $85,000 for men and women we serve coming out of jail and prison. We created more permanent and affordable housing on Charlotte Square and on The Loop and on Thurston Road Apartments for men and women there and community. The Spirit was at work and has been breathing on us through the Mental Health Center and its work, who served over 314 people last year. And even though they had to shut down because of the, shut down the in-person counseling in the Mental Health Center, they transitioned to phone consults. And what they found was that patients were more comfortable in their own environments. And they found that this therapeutic approach was a godsend to meeting their needs, the Spirit was at work. The power of the Spirit has allowed us to serve over 100 families through our Adoptive Families program this past year who otherwise would not have been served. It has allowed us to welcome and care for children in our religious ed program, our sacramental programs, our buddy reader programs. It has allowed us to bring special partners together in the work of creating the Civil Rights Heritage Site First Universalist and First Unitarian Church. Together we hosted an amazing event this year with Susan Taylor as our keynote speaker. We raised over $17,000 for that effort. The power of the Spirit has breathed on us as we help care for and provide care and support for caregivers in our community, supper discussions and drop-in sessions so that they might support one another and that we might support them. We watched the Spirit move in the work in Haiti as we raised over $20,000 this year at our pancake breakfast for the work in the hospital and the community there. The Spirit has moved through our ministries in Chiapas as we connected with our friends there and our farm workers and the coffee growers and the children and the community as we walk together as one human family. Spiritus, you have done amazing work as the Spirit has been at work in us. It has brought us to this moment in our history because we know that we are not done. Jesus came shining a light on the injustices to the poor, the disabled, and he did something about the status quo. His entire life was a protest against current systems in the way of life that left the poor, the oppressed, and the vulnerable behind. With the full power of the Spirit, he healed the sick, he challenged relationships of power, old systems, and understandings that didn't work for everybody. He forgave his enemies, he raised the dead, he called women and men disciples and apostles alike. He gave dignity and he preached good news to the poor and he recentered the marginalized and he gave his life to teach the world how to love God and model how we should love one another. The Spirit was at work. In Rochester and around the country, we have been thrust in and we've seen these massive protests. 
for calling for justice. People from all backgrounds and social status and races and walks of life are coming together to finally address systemic and institutional racism that has caused black bodies to be viewed as expendable in policing and black lives to exist in the shadows of American inequities. We've not seen such a coming together since the civil rights era of protest. It's quite exciting that the spirit is moving us. What we are witnessing, friends, is the power of the spirit, the Pentecost. And our first local, after our first local protest here in Rochester, we not only experienced unified protesting, but we also experienced looting and violence that sought to steal the narrative of justice from our community that the spirit was moving us to. And I started to think about that, and after moments of prayer and clarity, I put up a Facebook post, asking those who looted the items to return them. Return them back to the past. And if you want to do that, you can bring them to church here anonymously, and I will return them for you. And you know, to many people, the request didn't make any sense, although they supported the call for it. But I think in troubling times, we can choose to stand in the seat of judgment or to hear the pain that people are sharing with us Amen. and call them to their better angels. Father Jim would often say, you tell people what you think of them by what you ask of them. And so on Thursday night, after putting out that ask and that request, I, had re I received five bags of returned stolen items anonymously, of which I returned to the stores from which they came. And just a couple of days ago, someone else dropped off stolen boxes of shoes that will also be returned to the store. This was clearly the power of the spirit moving in the hearts of the people who were able to rethink their mistakes and isn't that all of our story? That is why we need the spirit. We need this Pentecost, this harvest of justice. Because we know that the author of harm can be the author of healing. And that is why Jesus came to breathe the spirit on the disciples. And that is why he breathes it on us today in every city, in every country, in every place. In February of this month, Spark held a prophetic fundraiser event for the Civil Rights Heritage Site. And at the event, Reverend Sherry, Kwan, Reverend Lane, myself, and Mary Warren and Susan Taylor spoke. And they shared some really powerful, which I think are prophetic words with the crowd there that were guided by the Spirit. And so I'd like to just end with reflecting on those words again because it seems very clear to me that we are also again, once again, being led. As I recounted 13-year-old Tyree King being killed over $10 at that event, 4,000 black men and women lynched across 12 southern states in the south, and black men wrongly convicted like Anthony Ray Hinton for 30 years, the winds of change kept calling us. This morning, I'm reminded that we cannot do this work of tearing down the walls of justice, of injustice, and doing the work of racial justice and racial, racial reconciliation alone. Imagining what a racially just Rochester must be has to be done in partnership and relationship. We have to do this work in partnership and relationship because our lives are not our own. And we must remember the importance of interconnectedness that maintains that balance. It is time to decide how we will use our experience and knowledge for the whole. Courtney Alexander, writer. True partnership continually calls us to recognize that our lives are not ours alone. They belong to something larger, the collective. Individual schemes and agendas, seeing beyond a narrowness of our experience to something larger, better, for our city and our world. Pastor Lane, First Universalist. 
We know that the space and the place we choose to gather matters, that it helps form the stories that we tell. It is the people in spiritual community. It's the stories that we tell and the narratives that we hold. It's the pain and our deepest wells of where power lies that matter. It matters greatly which stories and which spaces we choose to elevate because it forms us as a people. As a people, the ways in which we choose to be in relationship with each other to grow deeper, to grow stronger. Pastor Kwan, First Unitarian. The partnership we established with the three churches and the city of Rochester was about more than fundraising to make an outdoor civil rights heritage site happen. It was then and it is now about eradicating childhood poverty in this city, addressing mass incarceration, looking at the ways in which the system privileges some over others and tells others that their lives don't matter. To see change within the dreams of our ancestors, we're going to need all of us. We're going to need deeper relationships, deeper partnerships, that we can weather the storms of pushback and apathy because to bring about change shakes up the, uncom shakes up the comfortable status quo. These shifts are not going to be easy. We have to come to the table again and again and again because we know that this work matters. May it remind us that something larger is at work, a larger call of justice, larger than our individual lives that require each one of us to jump in and get involved and to bring this vision about Pastor Lane. There are two gifts that parents want to give their children. One is roots and the other is wings. It gives us a way to preserve our history, our roots, and to know whose shoulders we stand on and set them up to spread their wings and fly higher than ever before. Tell the story of struggle and perseverance, of resilience and fearlessness. It's time to reverse the effects of institutional racism and segregation, to erase the red lines of our community. It is time to end discrimination in the workplace, time to make sure that each of our children, no matter where they are born, get a quality education. Mayor Lovely Warren, when you look at the concentration of poverty in our city that defines our neighborhood, it is not by accident or oversight, she continues, or the unintended consequences of social programs, what you see is the abject poverty and neglect. The loss of opportunity and stolen futures are the intentional consequences of, of the direct result of legal segregation and codified discrimination. The deliberate result of government-sponsored racism. The governments and decisions of yesterday created these problems, and the governments and decisions of today will remedy them. It is up to all of us today to right the wrong, to fix the problems we face. We have a great city. We have a great world of promise. Mayor Lovely Warren. So friends, we've heard the voices of wisdom. We've seen the spirit work and we're in that moment where the spirit is still working. And so as we listen, as we learn, and we act in these moments, may God continue to send the Pentecost, to breathe on us the harvest of love, the harvest of justice, the harvest of true peace for our world. And then, and only then, can we celebrate this amazing vision that God is moving forward for our world. My family and I have, have been guided by the, the and the love in this, in this for many years, and, and it's a happy anniversary day. Wrote this seven or eight years ago, and it was spurred by a siren that I heard outside of a rehearsal space, and it took my mind and my spirit to the place of where someone else might be in the midst of pain. I hope it speaks to your heart. <laughs> Oh. 
I want us to live in a world that can give our children hope in our places of darkness let there be a light to shine upon us so that we might hold on Sirens blasting just outside these walls I'm singing in safely tonight So barely breathing, not receiving helping hands Close enough to shut the doors between life and death And I'm sitting on this stool singing like a fool To an empty room no one else around but the sounds themselves Is that enough to help you? Is that enough to help anyone? No Judging, not forgiving, building on top of these walls that have been built wrong before. Well, outside of souls dying on your doorstep, crying. Is there anyone who can lend me some hope? train, the one filled with hope and love, and the one from which we all came, who's been waiting like forever, singing 